So to make, uh, to break up this simulation more clearly, what I'm going to do is write out this first part that we've now achieved. Uh, and I'm going to do that from the letter B fluid. And I'm going to middle click on here and I'm going to add a ROP output driver. And I've created in my hip directory, in fact, a subdirectory called cache. And I'm going to call it first pass dot dollar f dot video. So this is going to render out those points that form the fluid. And I'm going to render the first 100 frames. Uh, and then I'm going to move on and do the second part of this simulation. So let's render that out. Uh, and I'm going to pause the video while I do that. So that's rendered out now. And I can read it back in. Let's turn off the display flag here. Let's read it back in using a separate node just to ensure that things are neatly divided. Let me take a file. In fact, we've got a file node here, of course. And let's read in from the cache, first pass. And there, indeed, are our particles. So let's call this read in first pass. And I want to create an entirely separate second fluid simulation to handle those particles uh, that are going to fly past and not actually stick to the letter. And in fact, uh, what I want to do is to emit some new particles, which are going to be part of a fluid, from a subset of these particles. And there are a number of ways you could do this. Uh, what I've chosen to do in this situation is to have a look at the acceleration of these particles and choose a subset of particles where the acceleration is large enough. So we need to calculate the acceleration. Now, fortunately, we have, because these were originally part of a pop network, an acceleration set of acceleration attributes, Axel X, Axel Y, and Axel Z. But what I want is, is the length of this acceleration vector. So I'm going to need an attribute create to do that. And let's create an attribute called Axel Len. And I'm going to need quite a complicated expression to achieve this. There's an expression in the expression language called length, which finds the length of a vector uh, that consists of three components. Now, unfortunately, because we've moved our data from POPs into SOPs, we don't have local variables corresponding to those three acceleration vectors. So I'm going to have to use a point expression, and I'm going to reference the file node, which is bringing in those particles. The point number is going to be just the point number that's the current point. The attribute that we're going to be looking at is Axel. And the component is 0, obviously, for the x part of it. And I'm now just going to select this, press Ctrl-C, go to the end, press Ctrl-V, make that a 1 for the y component. Control V again, and make that a 2 for the Z component. So if I've typed that correctly, what that should be giving us is a value of the length of those acceleration attributes. So let's just see whether we are getting this. And of course, at the moment, it's, it's having a value of 0 because we haven't started yet. And that does appear to be working. And then I want to delete a subset, delete these points where their acceleration isn't large enough. So let me use a delete SOP for this. And I'm going to delete points 
and I want to delete the points using an expression and I can use a local variable for this because we've set this up as an attribute so let's try the acceleration is greater than 3 and I'm going to delete the non-selected so we're going to be left only with those points whose acceleration is greater than 3 so let's just paste through this and we can see for a brief period here we get a set of points and actually that's going to be pretty good that's more or less where the points are reaching the letter B so that's that's going to work reasonably well as a source for our second fluid now I need my second fluid to start with no points in it whatsoever so I'm going to lay down a geometry node uh, with nothing in it so let's call this empty and I'm going to get rid of the file and I'm just going to put down a null so this is this is going to have absolutely nothing in it at all uh, now to make this a little bit clearer and to avoid complications I'm going to use two dot networks so by default we're using this auto dot network here and any shelf tools we use are going to create nodes inside this auto dot network uh, but I can using this button down here and, and unfortunately this won't show probably on the video if I right click on it it gives me some options uh, one of which is create new simulation so I can create a new simulation and you can see we get a new auto dot network called auto dot network one uh, I'm actually going to call this splash dot network because uh, that is what it's going to be for and I'm going to rename the auto dot network to first dot network so that's going to be the first pass uh, and then by right clicking here we can choose and this is again off the video which of these two dot networks is the one which the shelf tools are going to create nodes in so for the second part of the simulation I want to set the current simulation to the splash dot network so any shelf tools I use are going to create nodes inside here it's currently uh, empty probably and it's just got a merge node and a gravity node in it so I want to create for this example an SPH fluid and the reason I'm going to use an SPH fluid for this part for the splashes is because in general that gives much better results for splashing type situations so let's take this empty node here and create an SPH fluid so what we should find is that in here we now have all of the nodes to have a SPH fluid and for this fluid I also want to use the same particle separation that we're using for everything else so let's go in here and copy this parameter and paste COVID reference in here so that that is also the same now this is starting with no particles in it whatsoever as we can see nothing's happening so we need to add some particles to it so what we're going to need is a particle fluid emitter so I need to select particle fluid I've used the shelf tool here emit particles press enter then select the objects to become the emitter and in this case it's these particles that I've processed here in the read in first pass let's see whether that's worked let's lay this out so we've got a particle fluid emitter added to our network here and it's picked up the correct particle fluid object this one here it's saying use stream emission I'm not going to use stream emission I'm going to use random points and we're going to use this emission geometry and I'm going to have constant birth and I'm going to try emitting 
300 points per second. Now I had to play about uh, experimentally with the correct rate of emission here. There is uh, a bit of a problem because we've turned off ensure particles are kept apart on our first fluid simulation if you remember. So it may be that the particles have become too close together because the, the simulator isn't forcing them apart. And that's going to be a problem for the pop solver, it, uh, for the particle fluid solver here. If it finds that the particles were birthing are too close together, then it's going to become unstable. So you want a relatively low birth rate here. I found that this birth rate of 300 doesn't create an unstable sim simulation, it creates a stable one. So I'm going to pause the video and simulate this through because because it's an SPH fluid it does actually take a little bit longer than the flip fluid and I don't want to delay while uh, that is rendering so I, I'm going to just uh, pause the video and then simulate this through. But in fact I'm, I'm leaping ahead too quickly because there's one other thing I need to do on this emitter which is to ensure uh, that we're inheriting the velocity from the particles that we're birthing these particles from. And we also need something for our particles to collide with, our fluid to collide with. Uh, and if we have a look at our letters, uh, I think we'll find uh, that they're centered on the origin. So if I set up a ground plane, which I can do using the shelf tool, I need to move it quite a bit down like that. Let's just see whether that that should be fine. So we've now got some particles being emitted and we've also got something for them to collide with. So let's try playing this and I'm going to, in fact, play it and cash out a number of frames and pause the video while we do this because, as I said, it's quite slow to simulate, so let's do that. So let's play this through and see what we've got. And we can see we're getting our particles emitted and splashing onto the floor. And in fact, I think they're bouncing rather too much, so uh, I probably want to turn down the, the bounce amount for the final render. So the next thing uh, I want to do is take the fluid that's been created. So this is the empty fluid here. Uh, and then I want to do exactly what I did with the other fluid, which is lay down a ROP output driver and I'm going to render the first 100 frames and I'm going to put this in the cache as the splash pass and I'm going to render that out and let's pause the video again so what I need to do now is bring in the two fluids together. So let's lay down a geometry node and let's call it final fluid. And I'm going to need two file nodes. So the first one I'm going to use to bring in our first past pass particles and the second one to bring in our second pass particles and then I'm going to merge them together and that's going to produce an error because they're different types of fluids so these particles are going to have slightly different attributes on them but we can ignore that and then I'm going to put down a particle fluid surface node now the particle fluid surface node is expecting to find here in the step size uh, the size, the particle separation of our particles. So we need to go back to letter A. We need to copy the point separation again. And we need to 
paste it into each of these so that we have the right step size and that now looks much better. Let me do a flipbook and I'm going to pause the video while we do that. So that's now rendered out. Let's have a look at it. And I think for my test we've got too much splash coming out there that it's lasting for too long. So I probably just need it. When does it start? I probably just need it. So we need it probably between maybe about this frame here. So between frame 37 and say 50. So I can change if I go back to my splash network and my particle fluid emitter. Uh, I can change this so that it only is active when the simulation frame is greater than 37 and less than 50. So at other times it's not going to emit any particles at all. So I'm going to re-render that geometry based on that new emission of particles and bring it back in and do a flipbook. But I shall do all of that uh, with the video paused. So this is the flipbook that I've rendered with the new emission of particles. And we can see that that looks a little bit more like they are being produced by particles missing their target here. And there are a lot of things that could be tweaked about this simulation. Uh, I'm just going to cover a couple of them in detail. You can obviously adjust the values on the particle fluid surfacer to produce tighter or more expanded fluid. And I've covered that in some of my other videos. Uh, you can also uh, vary the size, the p-scale of these different particles, in particular this splash uh, geometry, uh, by varying the p-scale attribute uh, you can affect the way that the particle fluid surface will surface those particles and it creates a slightly more interesting effect. The other thing that you can do right back at the beginning, uh, You'll recall that fundamentally what's happening for the first phase is that particles from the letter A are being attracted to particular points on letter B. Now those points do not have to be static. So, for example, uh, we can use a deformer such as a lattice deformer to and we can select all of these points and we can then use the lattice deformer which works by having us transform the points in this lattice for example by narrowing it Let me get this right. By narrowing it down in this direction, widening it, widening it in this direction, and perhaps moving it over like this. And you can then keyframe uh, these positions so that they revert back to zero over a certain time period, for example. Uh, so let's revert these now to defaults.
and we should then find that this animates. So this would cause a different uh, type of behavior on our initial fluid simulation because the, the particles would move towards these points which are themselves moving. And obviously we would need to address the issue of the bounding box and so on and, and edit how that worked uh, by, for example, ensuring that the bounding box effect doesn't enter into force until later in the simulation to give us a more interesting set of moves as the fluid transforms from one letter to the other. I think that's probably about it for uh, setting out one method of explaining how to use uh, the pop solver and the particle fluid capabilities of Houdini to create liquid transformations. I hope it's been a useful series of videos.